Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be covering the bull flag we've been forming on the hex price that we seem to have broken recently. We're going to be covering the exponential support as well as horizontal support, which has seemed to provide a great region of support for this current bounce that we're in. Um, our exponential regression rainbow, all of that and more. So if you like this kind of content, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's go ahead and jump right into this analysis. So first of all, first things first, we got a new mic, boys. We finally have <laughs> quality audio, all right? So today's a good day. We have a new mic. We have two penny hex. Now let's get into this, right? So we've, we've been talking about this bull flag for a while now. So if you've been following the videos, this is nothing new to you. And it's as simple as this, right? You have the beginning of your flag and you take a measured move from the beginning of your flag again i'm considering it to be here because it was this end of this sort of mini accumulation zone and you take it to your local peak and all you have to do to test your target is place it at the point of breakout we've done this uh, almost in every video for the past two three videos just to illustrate that once we break this flag it is more probable for it to continue in the direction of breakout than if it was just you know inside so we broke it right tweeted about it if you saw it cool if not go check out the twitter link in the description we tweeted about this breakout right here at around the 17 region and again we've been talking about this flag for a while now and lo and behold we broke to the upside and so far if we take a measured move from bottom to top we're up 50 percent Right, so if you've been following this channel for even just a couple weeks, you know that I've been talking about this 137 region as potential support, 1.5 pennies as potential support. Look at that, we bounced right off of 1355. So, goddamn, if, if you had, you know, not saying I told you so, but. So, could we be seeing a three penny hex in the next, you know, month or so? I think it's likely. I think this month is gonna be good. Because, you know, we've broken out of, uh, good for price, because we've broken out of this bull flag. And not only that, right, this region of support is not only horizontal support, but if we look at our exponential regression rainbow, then you notice that it is also exponential support. And we did dip beneath it, right, as we have in the past. And I did want to point this out, okay? We haven't touched on this graph too much. This was the original exponential fit uh, regression, right? But the graph we haven't touched on too much is our extension from our exponential fit, which I, I'm going to make this a little prettier and, you know, make it look cool and all over time because I think it's more important than we've given it credit for, okay? Because if you look at our local peak in May, we pretty much were less overextended with lower highs every single time, right? From our overextension of 24 to 9.3 down to 6.8 down to 3.5 or so. So all of this is what X above the this exponential curve we were essentially on, right? So if we were to land right on it, price divided by the prediction would essentially be one. They would be the same, right? Because it's finding support. So that's corresponding to a region like this right here where we pretty much bounced right off of it. But I, I did want to continue on the fact that we've had lower highs every single time ever since last May. So we've been for, forming lower highs on this extension from exponential regression for the past year or so. And again here, 1.96, most recent at 1.67. And what's probably even more important is this section right here, right? Because like I said, we have dipped beneath our exponential regression in the past. Um, about three and a half percent beneath it or so, right? And how low did we dip beneath it here recently is about, you know, 6.5% or so. So nothing too crazy, right? Actually, back here, it dipped as low as, uh, excuse me, as low as, you know, 5%, 5.3%, whereas here we're about 6%. So just about a percent um, lower than over here. And again, remember over here, we did dip beneath, price did dip beneath the exponential regression for a little bit, but that was just indicative of just another reaccumulation zone, right? And from then we went on to, you know, basically 2x, and that's where we are now. So the the daily data, right, our candles haven't closed today. I'm filming this before that's the case. I believe like 
three, four hours before that's the case. So we don't actually have, um, you know, a data point that tells us how far extended above we are. Because if we take a look, right, where's our exponential regression right now? It's at about the 1.75 penny region. If we look at where we actually are in price, that's like 10% above. So once the daily candle closes today, this is going to be at about 1.1 or so, which is around, you know, it'll, it'll be around here or so. So we've been in a clear downtrend of overextension from the exponential regression coming down to it. It looks like this could be the beginning of a new sort of, you know, uptrend. Uh, I'm not sure, but look, look what happened here, right? We were overextended, lower high, lower high, and then sort of this, you know, reaccumulation, re I guess you can call it, before we had our, our major blow off top in May. It wasn't even really a blow off top, was it? It was more so just, uh, yeah, it was, it was just the local top, right? I wouldn't consider this a blow off top, really, because we don't see huge wicks to the upside. This here, you could consider more a blow off top. The New Year's pump, we had at two pennies. Um, but without getting too much off track, right? I think this is an important graph to keep track of. I think it's an important chart to keep you updated on. And let's see how it, it continues to play out in the future, right? Because who's to say we're going to hold exponential, uh, we're going to hold this exponential fit forever, right? Um, now, it essentially correspond to just holding this line for forever. So we'll see. We'll see what transpires, right? But this is bullish. I mean, we bounced off of this historical region of resistance. So now you could consider it historical support as well. And again, I think it's really bullish. I think we could be seeing three pennies soon. Now, obviously, will we just go straight to three pennies? Probably not. We'll probably see pullbacks along the way. Like just look at this recent uh, run we had from, you know, the 0 0.008 to the 0 0.023. So almost a three X. And if you consider almost a three X from where we are now, well, you're looking at three pennies, right? So it's not out of the cards, but recall that we did have anywhere from, what was this here? Eight, an 18% dip over here. Jeez, a 30% dip, gnarly, but we can handle that, right? Because we're in crypto. A 19% dip, and there are probably some 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 other dips in there that are just equally as substantial actually i think that's pretty much about it I mean, let's take a look at this one over here i don't want to make it too messy here but yeah anywhere from 18 to 30 percent dips so if we if we round let's say we've had 20 to 30 percent dips about one two three four of them on the way from you know 0 0.008 to 0 0.0023 so four dips 20 to 30 percent on our way to you know 3x price back here and I mean you can already see that we have had some volatility if you look at this wick right here you know that was already our first 18 percent that's pretty interesting right hex likes to have these 18 percent dips uh, on its way to its local peak during a rally so again horizontal support exponential support we broke our bull flag I mean I don't know what else you could be asking for in terms of indicators um we i remember we were looking at the six hour for a minute i was telling you guys like hey we, we we're seeing some divergences because if you look at you know we were forming lower lows on price but if you look at you know rsi we were actually forming higher lows so this here is pretty indicative of reaccumulation sort of bottoming zone we're pretty much forming divergence on the six hour chart starting april 13th all the way to april 27th so, so about two weeks of uh, divergence on the six hour and it's not right divergence on the six hour is not as significant as something like divergence on the one day or the one week those are definitely more significant because they're on a longer time frame so and we can actually keep having divergence on on you know on rsi relative to price for a while so it's not indicative of like, you know, that's that's the bottom. For example, from the 14th to the 19th, you saw we had divergence and we did have a bounce, but then we kept going lower and kept forming our divergence essentially. So you never really know where these things are going to stop or when the trend is going to reverse, but there are tools you can use, right? Once you use multiple models and 
multiple of your models start being coherent with each other, right? They start, I always forget this word. It's um, whenever you have convergence, that's the word. Whenever you have convergence of your models, it's a generally a good sign. So you can see we are having some resistance around the two penny region, which is understandable. Let's actually draw this over here, right? This wick here at the two pennies. You see it was resistance here as well, and we actually dipped all the way back down here. I don't think something like this will happen again. Uh, I do think we have tested this region enough to, to not have something like this happen. However, could it be resistance and see us come back down a little bit, anywhere from 18 to 30%, right? You know, potentially it could be. So what would an 18% dip from here look like? Uh, just back to the 168 region, which we were just at yesterday, okay? So could we dip back down there? Of course, of course we could. Could we even have, you know, chop in here? We could. I'm starting to doubt it a little more because if we were to have chop, uh, if you remember in this prior video where I was talking about the 100-day moving averages, I said, you know what, we've had sort of these choppy regions in the past around the 100-day moving averages, both the simple moving average and exponential moving average. You see historically, ever since December, this has been kind of mini reaccumulation zone. Uh, we did actually almost bounce right off of it. The low here was, what was it, 137. It's coming back to us. Uh, but the 100 MA was at 136. So almost right on it. Uh, but obviously here we dipped beneath it and chopped around it. So could this just be... Uh, a B wave, I guess. Could this be an A, B, C correction, sort of like we had here, where you have this, you know, this correction, a relief rally, and then back down to the prior lows, a little higher? Could we see something like that? Sure, because at this point, you know, if it came up to here, it came back down, then our 100 day moving averages would be moving up, and this could be essentially reaccumulation, or this could essentially be just, you know, we could be going to three pennies in the next few weeks or so. So I can't guarantee that price will come back down to these regions. Just to give you an idea, the 100-day MA and EMA are around the 1.3, 1.4 penny regions or so. And so I can't guarantee we'll go back down there ever or soon, right? So act accordingly. Uh, but right, we have these six-hour divergences. Uh, this is V1. What else do we have? I guess you could consider this a hidden bullish divergence. Let's give you guys a fun little uh, Easter egg, I guess. So a hidden bullish divergence is what's going on right here, okay? Essentially, we have divergence on price and RSI. However, we actually have higher lows on price and we have lower lows on RSI. Now, the reason this, this is bullish is because the psychology of this is essentially, well, we formed a higher low, right? It's sort of our new bottom, which is 2x above this previous one, which is insane. Um, so we formed this higher low. However, we were cooler. You know, we cooled off more than we were cooled off here. So you have more room to grow, I guess you could say. So that's the psychology behind that is the fact that you're at a higher price, but you have more room to grow than you did back when you were at this lower price. I hope that makes sense. So whenever you see a divergence of price and RSI on local minima, so here on bottoms, that's bullish generally. And whenever you see a divergence on local maxima, so tops, then it's generally bearish. Like you can see this one here from March 27th to April 7th, March 27th to April 7th or so, right? You had higher highs on price, but you had lower highs on on RSI, so you can use these tools. And again, you can see this was a, a, the local top essentially for the past month or so. So you can use these tools uh, to get a general understanding of where the markets are, if we could be near nearing local tops, local bottoms, and so on. So again, these are just tools. None of this is ever financial advice, All right? Your generic disclaimer for this video, but I think it's really cool that we actually bounced right off of this region we've been talking about for a while now. And as I was saying, like people were starting to get bearish, so it's time to get bullish, right? So that is your video for the day. We will be going live tomorrow, I believe, with looking to crypto. So I'm just going to go ahead and confirm that with him on Twitter. Again, if you guys aren't following on Twitter, make sure to follow over here. Uh, we're almost at 420 uh, followers, so that's really cool. Um, 
here let me let me take you guys back to this tweet I made here so I, I you know tweeted this at breakout once we actually finally broke our flag which we were talking about for the longest time and so appreciate your support appreciate your watching go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of content we made it past 1400 subscribers so again I want to thank you guys so much for the support and leave a thumbs up subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you in the next video peace